morning and a happy Sabbath. It's good to have you this morning. We thank God for yet another week. We encourage uh, our brothers and sisters who are joining us online to join us this morning for this study. We thank God he has seen us yet another week. We are still managing for the master till he comes. And last week we were looking at laying up our treasures in heaven. We looked at characters who had learned the secret of laying up their treasures, of knowing that we are here but passing by. And so they had learned the secret of laying up their treasures and not holding too closely to their hearts the possessions and the treasures of this world. And so this morning, we move to our current lesson, which is, and to the least of this. And my name is Masi Odor. I'll be your moderator this morning. And we shall begin with a prayer, then we'll have our panelists to introduce themselves. So shall we pray? Our loving Father, Thank you, God, for yet another morning, yet another week, and a, a time for us to come to your feet and study from you. Mm -hmm. Mighty God, without your Holy Spirit, what can we learn? Mm -hmm. What can we say that would be of any use to anybody? Mm -hmm. So we pray that you fill us with your Holy Spirit, O oh God, and that, Father, he will teach us what we desire to learn this morning. And that, Father God, you will change our hearts and make us into your likeness and to the likeness of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Speak to us this morning from this lesson. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So good morning, uh, good Elda, morning. and good morning, my sister Chris. Good morning. Good to have you in the panel this mm -hmm. morning. I'll give you an opportunity to introduce yourself mm -hmm. to our online viewers. Okay, good morning. I am Christine Onguru. Chris, I'm happy to be with you here so that we can learn together what the Lord requires from us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Karibu sana, Elda. Uh, happy Sabbath, uh, viewers. We want to thank God for the opportunity that he has given us this morning to come and fellowship together. Mm -hmm. uh, for those whom we have not met, my name is Jared Manyara. Yeah. I'm a member of the New Life Church mm -hmm. and I serve as a personal ministry leader. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to be participating in this lesson discussion as we learn how to manage our resources, the, the ones that the master has given us to manage for him. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And good morning. It's been a great it's a great it's been a great lesson. We're in lesson seven, Elder. We've literally made it to the middle of this lesson and it's been such a powerful lesson. And I kept telling myself I, I rarely do adult lessons. I do children's lesson. But God must have had a purpose for me to do this lesson this quarter because I have learned so much and God has been really um, speaking to me about specific things in my life that needed to change. Mm. So I hope you equally have experienced that yeah. this morning and to the least of this. And this morning, uh, our memory text comes from the book of Matthew. So I, I would like us today to read Matthew. Matthew chapter 25 um, from verse, let's see, 25 from verse 34. And the Bible says, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. Mm -hmm. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick, you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, But Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty? and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer to them, assuredly I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of this, my brethren, you did it to me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Beloved, this morning, we are being told in this lesson that and to the least of this, my brethren. The Bible speaks often of strangers, you know? Sometimes also called aliens, the fatherless, the widows. There may be, one, there may be the ones whom Jesus was referring to as the least of my brethren. How can we identify those people today? The strangers in the Bible times were individuals who had to leave their homeland perhaps because of war or famine. The equivalent in our day could be millions of refugees who have become destitute because of the circumstances they did not choose. The fatherless are children who have lost their fathers through war, mm -hmm. accidents, or sicknesses. This group could also include those whose fathers are in prison 
or otherwise absent. What a broad field of service exposed here. The widows are those who, for the same reasons as the fatherless, have lost their spouses. Many are, headed, uh, are, are heads of single-parent families and could use the help the church can provide. So, as we see this week, because we are managers of God's business, mm -hmm. helping the poor is not an option. It is following the examples of Jesus and obeying his command. So my sister, Chris, this morning, mm -hmm. that basically is a, like a summary that the lesson was giving us of who Jesus would have been describing as the least of this, my brethren. Mm -hmm. Yeah? I wonder, in, 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 in your thoughts as you, are, as you are looking at this lesson, mm -hmm. what jumped out for you in terms of Jesus set an example for us on how we treat the poor? Mm -hmm. Do you think that still applies today? I, thank you. I think uh, the example that Jesus Christ gave us, basically, mm -hmm we have deviated mm. because now we have become more selfish and we look at ourselves it is just me and me and sometimes even the poor of the society we try to demean them and set them aside however there is a provision that god gave for the poor and i think this lesson came at a timely uh, in, a, in a good time so that we can be reminded that we need to do this because if we read in the book of leviticus let's go to leviticus chapter 23 verse 22 there is, there, there's a provision that God gave so that the poor of the society will not be left behind. And even in as much as it was relevant those days, it is still relevant today. Let's see what it says, verse 22. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap the corners of your field when you reap, nor shall you gather any gleaning from your harvest. You shall leave them for the poor and for the stranger. I am the Lord your God. So someone would say that was during that time. Nowadays, we don't glean. But what essentially it means is that everything you're given, you need to consider that neighbor, that brother, that sister, who is less privileged in the society. Ensure that they are able to eat. Do not be this person who has more than enough. You are willing to trash it. You are willing to stock your freezer. Yet a neighbor is sleeping hungry. You need to identify these people, and especially in the household of God. Because... The poor are here with us. They are not go we are not going to have, uh, you know, after seeing things changed. So the poor are going to be with us forever. It is upon us now as Christians to take it upon ourselves and refer to not the brother that you are my brother, we are related, but that neighbor, that person I see in need, so that we care for them in that manner. So that is what actually stands out for me, that God wants us to do this today. Amen. Yes. Amen. Very powerful. Mm. Elder. I know this must have stood up for you, mm -hmm. and especially as a parent, as we are training our children on how we deal with the poor among us. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you thought this week as you were looking at this lesson. Ah, uh, it's amazing. Eh? <clears throat> we look at the unto the list of this. Mm -hmm. uh, probably I may challenge you as I comment. Eh? Yes. Have you ever been among the list of this? <laughs> I have actually. Personally, I have been. Mm. And I will tell you this lesson is very practical. Mm. But what touched me, your mentioned children, mm. there are two areas that Jesus has mentioned, mm. and if we are not careful, we'll miss heaven. One is the children. Mm. If we prevent them from getting to the kingdom, uh -huh. We are in trouble. The other one is the list of these, the mm. poor. <laughs> if we mess up, we are in trouble. Mm. You see Jesus in verse uh, 40 mm -hmm. of uh, Matthew chapter 25. Mm -hmm. He says that what we do to the poor, we do it unto him. You can imagine how much Jesus values the poor. Mm. And this list people mm. that we find in society. Sure. In fact, if you look at the memory text, mm. that, that's where the scare is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Then the king will say to those on the right, who are those on the right? <laughs> As you read the Bible passage, it mm. became clear. Mm. It, it, it is those who ministered to the poor, to the strangers, mm. and to the needy in society. Mm. 
and it's a challenge for us as Christians mm -hmm. that we need to take this lesson very seriously and see how well we can minister to these brethren whom Christ values greatly. Mm. Thank you. Amen. Amen. That is so powerful. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I've remembered you asked me about children. Yes. <laughs> Nowadays, mm. we teach children selfishness. Mm. And they grow up being selfish. To the point, even when they're adults, they're still selfish. Mm. They don't even mind about their sure. own parents. But as parents, mm. that is something that we need to do. There are sometimes <clears throat> I I do even things just uh, accidentally. Mm -hmm. We're walking in the street. Out of the blues, I see a beggar. Mm -hmm. I just remove some money, mm -hmm. give to my child, and tell them to drop something there, mm -hmm. so that that person can have food to do what? To, to eat. eat. That person uh, person is begging because he does not have what? Food. Mm -hmm. uh, a number of occasions. I've been able to identify a few people in the neighborhood mm. and uh, I marshal my children and we go together. Mm. And I put them in the forefront to do something so that they can learn that God has blessed us to have food. Mm. We must also remember those who do not have what? Food. And there is this something that they normally learn in the children classes. Eh? Mm. And I thank God for the children teachers. Yeah. Share. Share. <laughs> so I teach them how to share with others. Mm. And I think this is something that we need to remember every other day as parents. That as these children grow, if we love them to be in heaven, mm. we must teach them to remember they are underprivileged in society. Sure. Thank you. Very, very true. My sister, Chris, <laughs> you, you can see this is, this is quite, it's it, a very practical lesson. Sure, right? yes. So, mm -hmm. we have learned, mm -hmm. so based on our summaries, we basically then are saying that the ministry to the poor mm -hmm. was really part of Christ's yeah. mission. And it is the reason why mm -hmm. he came. Mm -hmm. And so I am wondering, if you could take us through, mm -hmm. we look at the mission of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. because there was a certain way that, you know, that the, 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 is, like the Hebrews had looked to the Messiah, mm -hmm. and he disappoints them because of who he comes <laughs> as. And so, um, as we look at Isaiah 61, mm -hmm. verse, verse 1 and 2, which sort of just brings together what his mission was, mm -hmm. could you look at the life and ministry of Jesus Christ in, 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 in as in relation to this study of reaching the list? You, you know, if, uh, I want to say something. Elder has really challenged me mm -hmm. on, on his methodology of involving the children. I think we need to take it up. So um, let's come to the book of Isaiah. You know, Jesus Christ, he read that book with an intention. Because um, the Jews, when they were anticipating his coming, there is a way they had anticipated their king to come. He was going to come for the known people for the people of class, you know, because th that time there were people who were segregated, you know, the tax collectors, they were not very important in the society. But he challenges them by reading this verse and he says, the spirit of the Lord, of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. Mm. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, he, to proclaim liberty to the captive and opening of prisons to those who are bound. And then you look at it, so what type of prisons did these people what kind of prisons were there in those days and you will come to realize that if someone was sick then they always had a reason why this person was sick if someone was there for mute or blind they had reasons and they would even go ahead to ask so for whose sin is this person paying for and then jesus comes and disappoints them by ministering to these particular people ensuring that the blind are given sight they are able to see it was important for him so that the religious leaders would look at his example and try to realign themselves to see if they are in this ministry of Jesus Christ. And so it was a big challenge in those days. Even the, the widows, you know, they were neglected. The, the, the single people, they were set apart. <laughs> you know, I, I even remember incidences where people who had uh, leprosy, they were cast out left outside there, nobody is ministering to them. Yet these were people. And so Jesus was willing to mingle with these people, to restore them, to give them an, a tomorrow. 
a better tomorrow. And it is important that even us today, we embrace this Jesus ministry and understand that we have to allow people to rest from the labors, from the troubles by being involved in their lives. So that we don't maintain the status quo where I only know Elder Jared Manyara, he's my friend. If he's unwell, I stick to him. I need to identify other mm. people. I need, to, I need to identify the other people and to make sure that they're also part of this ministry. Oh, yeah. That is so powerful. Elder, looking at the ministry of Jesus Christ, mm. and you can imagine if, if, if they had been waiting for a king to come and deliver them. Yeah. Yeah, you can imagine. So they're, they're waiting to be delivered from the Roman power, only for him to actually say that he is coming. <laughs> actually, the, the, the Bible says that he has anointed. You know, he, yes. you can imagine anointed. You're an elder, mm. so you've been anointed. Mm. <laughs> He, and, and you can imagine he's been anointed mm. to preach the gospel to the poor, yeah. you know, and, 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 you know, and to mm. mend the brokenhearted. Mm. I think that was very disappointing eh? for mm. the rich and the mighty. Mm. That must have been very disappointing. What do you think, Elder? And, 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 and bring it down now, relate it to our day today, and then say, who is then preaching this gospel to the poor? Mm. Uh, <coughs> it is very challenging. Mm especially for people who feel oppressed. Mm. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> I just want to pick it up. Eh? Mm. Let's look at our, our country, not only the, our country, but another country. Mm. The people always, who always shout that they are oppressed, mm. they are usually the people who means. Mm. The poor normally leave their faith to God. And that's where you find that in uh, countries, for every successful government that goes into power, they always think about those around them. Now that's when they feel they have been delivered. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the poor are forgotten. They are always ignored. Now, here, someone comes whom is the deliverer yeah. and people are expecting him to deliver them and uh, then when he comes he changes the subject <laughs> <laughs> yeah and <clears throat> even as he change, as he's changing the subject it is not in the direction they're thinking is now going to the dump site. Mm. You can imagine if you see someone walking to the dump site, you say that person has gone nuts. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I think they were looking at Jesus and wondering, eh? What is wrong with him? We thought he's coming for us. Mm. Why is he coming for these fellas mm. who have problems, eh? Yeah. And the poor were always thought that they're suffering because of their own what? Their own, uh, the, the, their own mistakes mm. and now Jesus is coming for this kind of people and Jesus I think he made them start thinking what is really the mission of, this, of the Messiah mm. we were expecting him to come for the second word second coming mm. and deliver us but now why is he coming for this the, the least the ones that are ignored mm. in heaven we love both the poor and the rich mm. they will be interacting they will be neighbors mm. is there a way that we can interact in heaven if we do not interact on earth mm. of course in heaven we will not have the poor and the rich yeah. yeah but will we have known how to appreciate each other when we go to heaven mm. so jesus made this point very clear among the rich in society yeah. because for them uh, they were not bothered about this they thought the best is to do what? Is to go for the fellow rich fellas. I remember there was a story we were told 
of uh, someone who was told to offer lunch on a Sabbath to a poor young man. And she refused and said the food was not enough. And uh, many times, I don't want to lie, even us. I'm not excluded. Yeah? Even in church, sometimes you may have one plate of food and you took breakfast. Someone has come here and asking for food and you tell them there is no food. When you can spare that one, that lunch, because you took breakfast, you can spare this one. There are occasions here in church. I've come across someone telling me that he or she has not eaten for how many days? Two days. It is quite a challenge. Do we really understand what is the mission of Jesus? And actually, even in the next day, you will realize the Bible says that the poor will always be with us. And it is one of the responsibilities that God has given us to use his resources for. Because in the management of his resources, he has tasked us to remember the poor. Oh, Thank that's you. Really powerful, Elder. And I'll still come back to you because I like the fact that we have we have brought it in and said, then how are we taking care of the poor among us? And you have rightfully given a practical example when this is a very big church. And sometimes it's very possible for somebody to be lost in this church. It is possible for somebody to actually come and when we live after divine hour, they have nowhere to go because they don't know anybody. They are visitors. And you can come for many Sabbaths without anybody ever noticing you and realizing, I think this person is a stranger. You know, a stranger means they, 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 they are new to us. What, where do they eat? You know? Um, so practically now we are saying God had made provision in his word about how uh, they were supposed to take care of one another in terms, and especially the poor among us. And thank you, Chris, for reading that for us. Mm -hmm. huh? And there's a quote here from Exodus 23, verse, uh, verse 10 and 11, and the Bible says, NKJV, <coughs> that six years you shall sow your land and gather in its produce, but the seventh year you shall let it rest and lie fallow, and the poor, the, the, the poor of your people may eat, and what, and what they leave, the beast of the field may eat. In like manner, you shall do with your vineyards and your olive groves. It's amazing how God thinks even of the animals. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So in this food chain, he's actually saying, you who already have land and you have vineyards and you have planted, he's saying when you have harvested for six years, mm -hmm. let the land rest in the seventh year. I'm not a farmer. I actually didn't even grow up in, a, <laughs> in, in what you would call a proper, a proper farm. But I would see mm -hmm. that, you know, when you... Um, even uh, this mboga, mboga mm. kenyeji that just grows wild. Eh? Yeah. You don't even need to plant mm. it. So you can imagine, especially you from Kisi where it grows all the time. I would imagine if a whole year you did not till your land, you basically let it rest. So it is good rest for the land. But also I am sure mboga will grow. Yeah. I am sure they will be saying, and the Lord is saying, because you harvested last year, leave it. Let the poor among you come and glean of it. Mm. But even then, after the poor have eaten, he gives provision for animals. Sure. What a God we serve. Mm. So, Elder, take us through in terms of God's provision for the poor mm. in the Bible. And how do we bring it today? How do we bring that today so that we are making provisions for our poor mm. today? Thank you, my sister. Mm. Uh, when we look at Deuteronomy chapters 15 verses 11 mm -hmm. the bible says for the poor shall never cease out of the land sure. so that is factor number one mm -hmm. i know the world governments have been striving to eliminate poverty mm -hmm. i remember somewhere in the late 90s mm -hmm. when there was that program of eradicating poverty mm -hmm. by the year 2015 yes <laughs> we are now in 2023 but i'm still seeing them around yeah it's even worse <laughs> yeah so it's a reality mm. in as much as yes we're striving to eliminate poverty mm. yeah they will always be with us yeah so if they will always be with us mm. what is our responsibility mm. the bible says therefore i command thee that is god himself mm. he is commanding us yeah saying 
thou shalt open thine hand. So, let us open our hands. Yeah? And to who? And to your brother. <laughs> Start with your brother. Yes. You know, sometimes eh, we forget our own brothers in the name of going to serve the poor. And actually, I can mention this one time when I was approached by a brother in church looking for help from me. And the help that he was looking for is the help we have been striving to give others outside the church. Yeah? So God is reminding us and to thy brother, mm -hmm. then to the poor, poor, and then to the needy. To the needy. Mm -hmm. So we are commanded in as much as yes, God is going to provide. Mm -hmm. He provides through who? Through men. Us. Mm. He has given us the resources mm. that He is going to use. No, no, not that we are going to use. He is going to use yeah. to provide <laughs> to the needy among us. Mm. Uh, there is this prayer one time we were having a discussion about when we are praying for food. Where do we normally pray for? God blesses the food as we eat it. Eh? And then for those who do not have, provide. <laughs> then how does God remember them? <laughs> yeah. In fact, it was a very big debate. Yeah. Yes. He remembers them through us. Mm. He teaches us to be selfless. Yeah. Because God does not drop food from heaven mm. when the food is already here. And that's where we have been given a responsibility as members of God's family. So, uh, you also read in um, Exodus, to let the land to be fallow. So that the poor can also have something to do what? To eat. To eat. <clears throat> when God has blessed you, do you reserve some for the poor? I grew up in the village. And those years, at least the farms were there. I remembered that when the harvest time came, the owner of the farm never cleared everything from the farm. Oh, okay. I remember even as children, we could go from behind as they were harvesting, eh? To collect some maize, the remains, eh? That is what we could use to sell to meet some of our needs. And even those people who do not have enough in their homes, they use also used to collect. Actually, what the Bible is saying is something I have seen with my own what? My own eyes. So when God has blessed you, in the current uh, situation, we have a salary. You have given tithe. You have given your offerings. Mm -hmm. You have met your needs. Do you reserve something for someone who does not have food? Hmm. Yeah? So, we need to be very, very, very practical hmm. as we live in our situation. What is seed that we can live follow hmm. on the seventh year? Hmm. <laughs> so, we must clearly ask ourselves. Uh -huh. And we shouldn't follow in the footsteps of... Uh, Darwinism, mm. uh, as the lesson writer was pointing out, mm -hmm. saying that survival for the what? For the fittest. For the fittest. <clears throat> Those poor ones, mm. let them die. We don't mind about them. Mm. Yeah? Let's enjoy, eat, and even throw away food. Mm. It is unfortunate. Uh, I, I want to save my sisters. Mm. There's something I've normally seen. You go to the dump site where food, where thing, uh, waste is thrown. Mm. You find food, yet there are people who do what? Mm. I was trained by the elders when I was growing up. Not only my parents, but also the age mates of my parents. When you are served food, if it is more, return. Only have on your plate that 
which you can do what you can finish can you imagine all that food that is in the dump site if it was reserved how many hungry people we can feed yeah so it's quite a challenge yes and i want to thank god for the lesson writer mm. there are blessings pronounced for those who remember what the poor, the poor mm. and the needy in fact uh proverbs 20 27 mm -hmm. for those who give they will never do what they, they will never lack yeah mm. the king judges the poor with truth mm. <coughs> his throne will be established what forever blessed is he who considers what the poor mm -hmm. <coughs> the lord will deliver him in the time of trouble mm. can you imagine when we face trouble <laughs> we will be delivered yeah. because of the masses that we show to the what to the, to the poor mm. thank you very much amen amen elder I want us to move forward um, to the Tuesday part, uh, Sister Chris. But I'm picking up from Elder. You know, there's a verse that actually says, He who, um, he who, who gives to the poor lends to the Lord. Eh? Yes. What a powerful message that mm. is. That we actually, that, and the Lord is no man's debtor. Eh? Mm. God is, does not, you know, he's, he's no man's debtor. He pays yeah. his debt. Eh? <laughs> yes. So, so let's look at, um, so Chris, this morning, mm -hmm. in terms of people, you know, I have met people who can sell you. For money, <laughs> they can sell you, elder. They yeah. can they can actually sell you, as in people who are so tied to their riches mm. and possessions that they are unable to see beyond that. Mm. And in the Bible, and in our lesson this week, we look at a young man, a rich young ruler. Yeah. It's you know what a description, rich but young, but he was also in the ruling class. Mm. You know, so that when we really think about our country today, that could even have been someone who is a politician rich, young. So he had everything going for him. Not only did he have wealth, material mm -hmm. wealth, but he also had age, which time. Yeah. And he was also in the right mm -hmm. class. Take us through, you know, the struggles of this young man in relation to the least of this, my brother. First, uh, growing up, we were the poor in the society. Mm -hmm. We lacked almost everything. I remember struggling to even go to school, to even have food on the table, you know, and people would come to aid us to just have a meal. And we, I would admire rich people. <laughs> I would see big cars and I would say, one day I want to be like these people. And when I become like them, I will not share. Like, I will not want these people who are forgetting us to even enter my car. You see, that was my policy. Growing up as a kid, and it was foolish of me. But then... In the process of growing up and getting to be a Christian, meeting Jesus for yourself, then I meet this story of this person who was rich, they were young, and they were a ruler. You know, positions in society, the things I desired eh, as a child growing up. And, and, and what comes out to me here is that it is not wrong for you to be rich or to be a ruler or to be young. There's nothing wrong with that. But if that comes in your way of seeing other people, and wanting them to be part of you, then there is a problem. Because now this becomes your God. If you consider that Jesus Christ died for everyone, everyone, everyone has been died for, even those who are poor in the society, then as a rich young ruler, he would have, it will not have been such a big deal for him to consider the poor and share his wealth. But look at it this way. In the book of Matthew, chapter 19, from verse 16 to 22, it is the exchange he's having with Jesus Christ. And he's saying, Jesus Christ is telling him, uh, he's asking, so it's his question. So how, how good, good teacher he comes to him. What can I do so that I do what? I have eternal life. And then he's told to get hold of the Ten Commandments. Then he says, but I know the Ten Commandments. It is ironical because the Ten Commandments are just summarized. There are two words of love. Love the Lord God with all your might, with all your mind. And then, then love your neighbor as yourself. So there is no provision there for you loving your wealth more than God. For you loving the wealth more than your neighbor. So him having said that he grasped the Ten Commandments, it just shows me that he, had, he knew them. He was not leaving the Ten Commandments. Because now when he's told, go then and sell your riches. Eh? Verse 21, this is what he's told. Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor. 
and you will have treasure in heaven and then come and follow me. Then he goes away very sad. Because now he's been told the thing that is so precious in his life, go get rid of it. What Jesus was telling this rich young ruler that he's even telling you and I today is that money should not be a big deal to you. Money should not make you seclude the others, the other members of the society. If you do that, then that means you have forgotten God who ideally gives you the riches. You have forgotten God who has given you provision, the positions you have in society. God allows you to be in those positions so that you can aid the poor. And so I purpose to myself that now, if by perchance one day I will become rich eh, and I will have money, the way I wanted someone to remember me, to buy me just a pair of shoes, because I wore rubbers for long, eh? I would one day remember someone, if I see them wearing a rubber shoe and maybe I see they don't have, then I will be able to share, I will be lending to the Lord. And so that that wealth that God has given me, the little he has given me, will not hinder me from inheriting the eternal life. Because after all, it is the masters we are managing for him. So we have to remember the least of the society in this management. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. That is so powerful. Because I think many, many times we forget... This is God's. Yeah. Everything, Elder, your shoes, your even, mm -hmm. you know, even your ability to speak, where yeah. you teach, mm -hmm. the respect you've earned by the by the position that you hold, mm -hmm. it's because of God. God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I, so, thank you, thank you very much, Chris. This morning, I listened to you know to Pastor John Lomakin, and one mm -hmm. of the quotes that he said is that, "Do not let your possessions possess you." Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes we are owned by things that we should be owning. I'm wondering, you know, in terms of reaching out to the poor, this young, uh, this young ruler, the Bible says that he went away very sad because he was very wealthy. Yes. What traps are ahead of us, those who have wealth, number one, mm -hmm. but also who, those who desire wealth so much that in the process, because yeah. as Chris was saying, because covetousness comes two ways. Mm. Covetousness is that I have all this eh, and I desire more, yep. as we see in our political class. But we also have the poor who wake up in the morning only to think how they are going to earn that which you have, Elder. So that's equally co covetousness. Yeah, yeah. I am wondering, in terms of balancing it and managing for the master, mm. how do we protect mm. ourselves from getting possessed by things? Oh. <clears throat> First and foremost, mm. I think we are the attack of this in the early lessons. Yes. Seek ye first mm. the kingdom. Once you have God as your priority, mm. then wealth will become second naturally. Mm. But if you have wealth as your priority, mm. everything goes. Mm. And then selfishness comes in. Mm. But the most shocking thing I discovered with this rich young ruler is parenting mm. <laughs> how have we cultured our children mm? teacher mas i want to ask you mm. your child and now, now they are at least mm. big eh? mm. <laughs> when they were small mm. you give your child a pen mm. or a pencil mm. he goes to school it is mid-month and uh, you are broke mm. Your child comes home without a pencil. <laughs> and then <laughs> you ask him, where's the pencil? You need to do your homework. He tells you, you know, there's a classmate of mine who didn't have a pencil, so I gave him. <laughs> what will be your reaction? Most of the time we beat them up. Yes. yes. Did you think about yourself? Where do you think I get money to be buying all these things? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I've been in that. Yeah. But are you, what are you teaching your children? Are you teaching them that they should remember others or everything's for themselves? And that's where sometimes you, you even find even us parents telling our children, don't share, don't share. Yeah, come Anna, Anna, you, you know. <laughs> yeah, so it's a, a, a very great challenge. And if you see, this is a young person, so meaning, they say, where he was what? He was cultured. And that is why, 
he is becoming so sad when he's told to give away. And, and that is why you remember in our young age, yeah. your mother comes, gives you a banana, and tells you, can you share with me? You refuse. <laughs> what were they doing? Mm. They take all of it yeah. and eat all of it. Yeah. So that you learn to do what? To you learn to share. Mm. So let us put the kingdom of heaven first, mm. then the rest will be what? Will be second. And also teach mm. our own children mm. to place the kingdom of heaven mm -hmm. first, so that now the rest will follow. Thank mm. you very much. Chris, Shamasi, let me, let me, let me, let me, there's a comment. Eh? Yes. I, I, I like the comment that has been shared by Steve Amadi, mm -hmm. and this is what he's saying. We speak so well, quote quite well, yet that's all we do. Mm. We don't help the poor. Mm. We don't care about what they go through. We instead help those who would help us back. People we know. It is sad. And then he finishes by saying, what God wants today is action. It is enough. We have read. We know. Now we need to act. Thank you, Steve, for, for this comment. Yeah, because it's true. We, we really have to act. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Our brother Steve, that's a really powerful challenge. Mm -hmm. This morning, now comparing the rich young ruler yeah. with yet another rich person. Because the thing is, like we said, in, of, in and of, it, of themselves, there's nothing wrong with being rich. Yeah. But there's one here who is a corrupt government worker. <laughs> you know our KRA people <laughs> who we do not like. <laughs> so we are saying, but, but my question to you, um, uh, Chris, this morning, yes. is there hope for those who have made their wealth in unscrupulous ways? Mm -hmm. They have extorted masses. Mm -hmm. They are corrupt deal makers. Mm -hmm. But is there hope? in the eyes of Jesus yeah. when he looks at such as we look at the story of Zacchaeus there is hope Amen. there is indeed hope mm. because as long as Jesus Christ is still interceding mm. there is hope that is what I believe in as a person because the day he will stop then we will say okay maintain where you are mm. now it's over for you mm. but when you look at the story of Zacchaeus <laughs> you see you say the, the gov a corrupt government official it's true mm. And, and he was a tax collector. And you know, this is where we give the, 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 yeah, the bribes, the big ones and the small ones. And, and this man, when he, he had, he, he just had, there was a Jesus. And this Jesus, people were talking about him. And, and even the Pharisees were saying, ah, this man eats with sinners. And, and um, in my imagination, I'm imagining how excited he was. And he was saying, this man I have to see. So he strategizes himself well. This man, I have to see him. And, 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 and because I am petite, like I'm not able, and he has multitudes of people following him around. And then he was also embarrassed because now as a tax collector, he, people hated him. I'm sure if people saw him coming on the ground, they would have told him, get out of here, they would have chased him away. So he looks for a better way to get to Jesus. And, and Jesus, knowing before, he set himself to pass that way. You know, I love Jesus for setting himself to pass through areas that I can reach him. So that if I have lost hope, then my hope can be restored. Or so he looked at me. And so when he's on that tree, eh, Jesus Christ stops suddenly and looks up and says, I am going to eat with you today. Imagine the shock, not only on Zacchaeus' face, but on the throne. But this man is a tax collector. He has stolen from us. He has taken more than enough. And, and because there is hope, the moment he interacts with Jesus, the moment the interaction occurs, see, he says in verse 6, um, verse, let's recap verse 5, he says, And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. He, will, he was excited. And then he says, So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. He didn't even think twice. To say, okay, so what will be in my house? Will these people come in my house and see uh, the, the bag of uh, cash that I took from that gentleman? He, he was not afraid. As long as Jesus was there, there was still hope for him. So he goes with them to the house. He makes provision. And then he, out of the love and the acceptance and, and, and that Jesus shows him, he of himself makes the decision that I'm going to leave my unscrupulous ways. And I'm going to be a Christian for real. And so he says that I am going to take back 
what I have stolen, I will take back, it will return four times. Mm. I will remember the poor people of the society. In essence, what he is saying is that even though I earned it the wrong way, I am willing to give it back to you. Because at the end of it all, everything belongs to Jesus. Everything belongs to God. And, and because of what the hope that Zacchaeus and the chance that he was given, there is hope for me to, today. I may have earned money through bribes and done unscrupulous things. Today, Jesus is giving me a chance so that I can redeem myself so that I can earn this eternal life. I like, you know, there's a difference. The way Zacchaeus responds and the way the rich young ruler responds, those are two diverse responses. But we have such. And today, how I would encourage us to respond like Zacchaeus and take back and say, okay, I may not have gotten it the right way or I have excess. Ideally, I shouldn't have gotten this money. But because now I have it, let me, let me, let me look for someone who needs it more than me. So that I don't have more than enough. I have enough to share. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Mm. I think what was so powerful for mm. me in that, in that story of Zacchaeus is when Jesus says, Today salvation has come to this house. Mm. In the sense that, of course, Jesus had known Zacchaeus. Yes. And when you read the book Desire of Ages, you see that Zacchaeus had started going through a conviction when mm -hmm. he heard about Jesus and he wanted to see Jesus mm -hmm. for himself. Eh? Mm -hmm. So the thing is, like you're saying, that Zacchaeus had, you know, we're being told that he had apparently come under spiritual conviction yes. and yeah. wanted some change in his exactly. life. Eh? Mm -hmm. And, and, and the, so when Jesus comes and says, Zacchaeus, come down, <laughs> it was his, yani, it is what he was waiting for because Elder, it is hard to be hated. Eh? Yes. It doesn't matter how much wealth you may have. But can you imagine if everybody around you hated you? So him, Jesus offered to him that hope. And that is what he's offering to us today. Elder, this morning, we've looked at God's love for the poor. Yeah? And, and the needy and the broken hearted mm -hmm. and the broken in the society. The least of this, his yeah. own. Does God love the rich? And as, 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 as we look at rich men in the in the in the word of god mm. does god love the rich as well or are mm. the rich always on the wrong side of of things yeah, yeah? <laughs> okay uh, uh as i move to respond to that uh chris has challenged me mm. that jesus is always making his way yeah. to where i am <clears throat> i have seen in situations where i've been like the rich young ruler I'm talking about myself. <coughs> and probably I may not have uh, corrupted others. Eh? But what I'm seeing, there is hope for me. And because Jesus is coming my way, I want to go up the Saikamu tree. Yeah, now, <coughs> God loves both the rich and the poor. What matters is the total commitment that they have to him. We have uh, people like Abraham. What does the Bible say? He was not just rich, but very rich. Now in this lesson, we have the man job. But God does not choose to focus on his riches. He focuses on his relationship with him with regard to his riches. Ah, uh, God, I wish God could say this about me. Imagine God himself saying that you are perfect and upright. Among all the people, mm. you are perfect and upright. I look at my righteousness. It is just filled rags. But now here God comes and declares a man to be what? Perfect. This is amazing. Eh? And all of us know the story of Job. Mm. And Job <coughs> suffered. He had riches. He lost everything. And then uh, you wonder, 
why was God allowing this? But now that's a story for another day. Yes. What was this character that Job had that made him stand out? Mm. When you read uh, the book of Job, chapter 29, verse 12 to 16, you realize what Job used to do. He sought out the poor, mm. the fatherless, mm. the destitute, yes. the blind, mm. the widows, mm. and he helped them. Yes. In fact, he says, he used to bring joy to the widows. Yes. Job himself did not wait for these people to ask for help. He sought them out. I have seen in a number of cases I've helped. Mm. It is the needy who come to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this week I've learned I need to go out. Mm. Although I remember there's one case I sought out. Mm. Only one. Mm. But the job, that was not his practice. He always sought out. Actually, in verse 16 of chapter 29, he says, And I searched out the case that I did not know. <coughs> Many times, even when we seek out, we seek out the cases we do what we know. <coughs> and this is a challenge to us, that we need to seek God to show us those who are in need in our society. And yet we, we do not know. And we need to go to them so that they can see God having mercy upon them. When a total stranger, they have not even come across, comes to meet their needs. In fact, the silent white says, do not wait for them to call your attention to their needs. Yeah? As Job act as Job did, mm -hmm. the thing that he knew not, he searched out. Go on an inspecting tour and learn what is needed, <coughs> how it can be best supplied. Mm -hmm. Now, <coughs> Teacher Masi, I'm sure God has blessed you the way he has blessed me. At least I can have three meals a day. That's yeah. a big blessing to me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I may not be having what people call riches, but I can say I have been what? Blessed. blessed. Sometimes you go for road work. Mm. Yeah? Could that be an opportunity that God is giving you to seek out? Yeah. So as you exercise, are you seeking out if there's someone you can spot mm. who needs something? When you go to the market, in our, ta our seat here, mm. when you walk into a supermarket, do you look at the people who seated out there? Mm. It is a challenge to us that as Job, mm. whom God told Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Job. Wow. <laughs> wow. So let's mm. also behave as Job did mm. and go a step further. Mm -hmm. Not only to wait for these people to come to us, yeah. but seeking them out. Thank you. Mm. Oh, that is so powerful, Elder. <laughs> this lesson, unfortunately, we are coming very, very closely to the end of our lesson mm. this morning. Mm. Our dear viewers, but there are so many challenging things about, are you a lot about the people around mm. you? Are we a lot about the poor around you? Do you know the widows and the orphans among us here in church or in your neighborhood? Mm. Because there are so many. Our brother Elta and even our sister Chris has attested to a childhood of struggle. Mm. And thank God for where the Lord has brought you to. Mm. But did somebody in the church know about that? Do we know the struggles of those around us? Mm. As, as I, I, I let you prepare your closing remarks, Elta and, 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 and sister Chris. Mm. Um, Friday part... Mm. Is, you know, as, as the, the Friday thoughts that we were looking at is the quotation from Desire of Ages, the, uh, we're being told that when the Son of Man shall come in his glory yes. and all his angels with him, 
then shall he sit upon his throne and uh, oh, oh, throne sorry and then he shall gather all the nation and he shall separate them one from another thus christ in the mount of olives pictured the disciples the scene of great the great judgment day and he represented its decision as the turning point yeah when the nations are gathered before him there will be two classes the, and their eternal destiny will be determined by what they have done or have neglected to do for him in the past of the poor and the suffering can you imagine as in that will be a deciding point in terms of which class we belong to in terms of what we have done or failed to do for the poor as you open your doors to Christ needy and suffering ones you are welcoming unseen angels you invite the companionship of heavenly beings they bring a sacred atmosphere of joy and peace they come with praises upon their lips and an answering strain is heard in heaven every deed of mercy makes music there the father from his throne numbers the unselfish workers among his most precious treasures amen amen i wonder when god looks at you the three of us and the members of of the church today who are watching us online does he count us as among his precious treasure because of what we have done for the poor and the needy among us i'll let you give your closing remarks sister chris and our brother um i would like to say this in closing that i have learned that every time god gives me extra money there is someone who needs that money mm. and so i prepare myself to meet this person who needs the extra money be it that when i arrive at a supermarket a, a lady is following me up i will do shopping for them because mm. every time i get extra it was not meant for me so i attuned myself to to be like that because i was also helped with the people in the society so let's be people who remember the list of this it's not a we affair it's mm -hmm. a me affair as ogweno is saying mm. thank you amen sister chris oh uh, elder your closing remarks thank you sister mm -hmm. i have been challenged that i need to remember those who are not blessed in society amen because that was Jesus' mission mm -hmm. when he came to the earth. Mm -hmm. The only challenge I want to challenge all of us, me included, mm. is that let each one of us remember that time you put a smile on a need person's face and they lighted up your face. Mm. And let's continue doing that and let's increase the frequency of helping the poor mm -hmm. so that our faces will be cheerful all the time amen. thank you amen 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 elder i've enjoyed this lesson sister chris i thank god for you this morning my dear viewers this morning the bible says in first timothy chapter 6 from verse 17 it says instruction to the rich that is what it says and every one of us is rich command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty or to trust in the uncertain riches but in the living god who gives us the riches all things to enjoy Amen. let them do good that they, they may be rich in good works and ready to give willing to share as elder was saying storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life Amen. Amen. will you lay hold of eternal life are you trusting your personal riches? And because we're being told, trust only in the Lord who makes it possible for you to earn riches. We thank God for you this morning. Elder, pray for us as we close. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercies upon us. Thank you for entrusting us with your resources. And Lord, I will pray that you touch our hearts, that we may make use of the resources in our hands <coughs> to seek out the poor, the needy, the fatherless, and the widows. Mm. The Lord, they may glorify your name because of the actions you have enabled us mm. to come. Mm. We know by our own we may not be able to do it, mm. but I will pray <coughs> for the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives to convict us and to push us mm. to do that which is good. Mm. Every day, Lord, help us that we may fix our eyes upon Jesus, mm. who is the author and finisher of our faith who has taught us that as he came for the poor, that we may also go for the least in society. 
<coughs> as we continue fellowshiping this day. Mm -hmm. Lord, I we pray that you bless us and guide us in all the programs of the day. For this, I'm praying in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Next Amen. week, preparing for success. God bless you.